Right, so Adam's off this week, so it's me stepping in for him, which sounds like the perfect opportunity for me to tell him exactly how I feel about him. I really value you as a co-worker and as a friend, Adam. I'm so glad that we get to be around someone with such a level of creativity as it makes all our content better just with your presence in the office. Yeah. So take that, Adam. Anyway, here's 10 shocks that Triple H could book for the Raw after WrestleMania. If you like this video, consider subscribing as we have one of these lists, normally with Adam Blompier, every Sunday, as well as daily wrestling news videos. Number one, end of the Bloodline slash split the world titles. The Bloodline story arc has encompassed the entirety of Roman Reigns' 900 plus day world title run, and as a side note, is the greatest thing ever. So naturally, once Roman loses the Undisputed Championship at WrestleMania, he should also lose his family, in the process. While that admittedly sounds a little morbid, it's almost 100% necessary, especially if WWE is interested in telling an interesting story with the Tribal Chief following his loss at Mania. Roman's very clear insecurities that have been covered partially by those title belts will leave him in a very emotional state, which could potentially lead him to taking out said emotions on his Bloodline family. Lest we forget that Roman will likely not be the only Bloodline member that will suffer a loss at Mania, with the Usos likely also to be in a vulnerable state. So all in all, it has a recipe for a full-scale implosion. I guess the only question is what side Solo and Paul E end up taking, if any. And the Bloodline should not be the only casualty of Roman's loss at WrestleMania. The rather laughably long-winded, undisputed WWE Universal Championship, shortened to the UWU Championship, should also be put to rest the night after WrestleMania. After all, we all know Cody only actually wants the WWE Championship, so send the blue one packing back to SmackDown, or create a brand new second world title, perhaps with a tournament or battle royal of some kind to crown said champion, just ensure that each show has its own major prize once again. Hey, Adam, I mentioned a tournament. Your influence lives on. Number two, Matt Cardona. This one seems inevitable at this point. After all, the man himself has teased it numerous times. His friends are there, his wife is there. I mean, really, what reason is there to not come back? All right, yeah. Zack Ryder. Okay, maybe I see his trepidations. But you know, it's a new WWE, Triple H is in charge. One would assume that if Cardona is coming back to WWE, the Zack Ryder name will not be coming with him. He's made it abundantly clear that Long Island IZ is a thing of the past, so hopefully, under Triple H's regime, Cardona can return to play a more authentic version of himself, one that has seen him gain massive success outside the company since his release in 2020. While it may perhaps be a little too soon, why not have Cardona return to confront the new champion Cody Rhodes? After all, I'm sure Cody would approve, and it would be an excellent way to solidify to fans that Cardona is a far cry from Ryder and is to be taken seriously. Number three, Cameron Grimes. Onto another man whose name has been rumored for a while to be stepping up to WWE's main roster, Cameron Grimes. Grimes has been off NXT TV since way back in November, but has recently been working SmackDown Dark matches, so surely this one ain't too far off. Oh, and also, he's freaking jacked to the gills. The man has been productive as all heck in his absence. Yeesh. Grimes' jackedness will only help his case as he enters the shark-infested lands of WWE's main roster. However, he shouldn't have too much to fear, as his old NXT dad, Papa H, is in charge, for now. So there should be no name change, mask, or ridiculous, I don't know, janitor gimmick in the future, because, you know, Grimes, cleaning. Never mind. I bet Vince would have loved that idea. Number four, Jay White. While Cardona and Grimes are quite likely for a surprise debut on the Raw after Mania, as for Jay White, things are less clear. According to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, those close to White believe the former IWGP world champion is 50-50 between moving to AEW or WWE. While this makes his WWE status much more of a question mark, I personally think it would be much cooler to see him in the big dub. After all, he's been in the AEW circle before, albeit briefly, and has done everything he wants to do in in Japan, so why not take the plunge into uncharted waters in WWE? Out of all the options for a shock debut, the Switchblade is certainly the most tantalizing. I mean, there are so many options. He could go straight for Cody and recall their similar Bullet Club history, or similarly, he could do the same thing with AJ Styles, assuming he comes back from injury on the same night. Or how about Roman Reigns? What a statement that would be. Or what about the Judgment Day? While not everyone may be keen on the idea, White could add a different dimension to the group, and of course, there is also the Bullet Club history with Finn there as well. Regardless what path WWE WWE takes, a white debut 
on Raw would most certainly steal the headlines. Number 5. Matt Riddle and Randy Orton It seems rather strange to be approaching a WrestleMania that is devoid of both Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. The team of RK Bro was consistently a bright spark during the dark latter days of Vince's WWE creative reign of terror. Unfortunately, however, we've yet to see the team under the new creative regime, with Randy's hiatus with a serious back injury leaving a considerable void. Riddle didn't quite find his feet on his own without Randy toward the latter part of 2022, so hopefully a return for the original bro also sees Orton return by his side. And hopefully WWE will resist the temptation to pull a swerve and have Orton turn heel on Riddle immediately, as it'll be really nice to see RK Bro step up to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to be the new tag champion's first challengers. While we know that Riddle is seemingly good to go for a return, Orton's status is obviously much more unclear. Look, of course, we want more than anything to see RKO's being delivered left, right, and center. We just hope that Orton is healthy and happy above all else. Number 6. Roxanne Perez The health status of the now former NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez has been a rather hot topic recently. After defending her title against Maiko Satamora at NXT Roadblock, Perez collapsed and was taken off on a stretcher. While this seemed like nothing more than an old worky work, it turns out there was more to the story. According to Dave Meltzer on the Wrestling Observer Radio, the kayfabe collapse was done to write her off, so another issue could be addressed. What this issue was, and still is, is unclear. All we know is that her title has been vacated, and as of right now, she has still not made her return or been announced to be doing so. So while Perez will likely return at either NXT Stand and Deliver, or just after it to reclaim her gold, how about instead Trips gives the 21-year-old prodigy a call and allows her to return to take place on Raw instead of NXT? And you know what else he could do? Give Perez a Paige-esque debut and put her immediately up against either Rhea Ripley or Asuka in her debut. Although she probably shouldn't win the title. But a really solid showing in a debut bout? Sounds good to me. Number seven, FTR. Ah, man, FTR's theme song is so good. It'd be a real shame to see it go. Though if they do go back to WWE, we get the say yeah back, and I'm not too mad about that. As mentioned, Dax has done his fair share of teasing via his FTR podcast, and while their recent return to AEW TV would seemingly, and probably does, suggest that they'll be remaining all elite, if FTR was to go back to Papa H's warm embrace, the Raw after Mania would be the perfect stage. Similarly to our fifth entry, FDR, or The Revival I guess, could also be a potential first challenger to the new tag champs Sammy and KO, and could even instantly take one of the Raw or SmackDown titles away from them immediately. With Triple H in charge, FDR would almost certainly have a better go of it than they did under Vince, who according to Dax, was not a massive fan of the pair. So why not give it a go lads? What's the worst that can happen? Oh yeah, Vince could come back. I suppose that would be pretty bad. Number 8. Bron Breaker NXT Champion Bron Breaker is due a change. He steamrolled pretty much everyone on Tuesday night. Bron is great, but the time is right, and Carmelo Hayes is a great choice to take his mantle. So naturally, if Bron was to drop his title to Melo at Stand and Deliver and leave NXT behind, it's only right that he make his main roster debut on the Raw after Mania. And this may have some merit too, as according to Worked Wrestling on Twitter, Breaker is set to be a main roster mainstay following Mania. So if any on this list, this seems the most likely. He could come right up and enter a feud straight with... Uh, who's around? Uh, Austin Theory? Seth Rollins? Baron Corbin? Wait, no. No, not Corbin. Not the Corbin immediate NXT call-up feud. Not that one. Number 9. Naomi and Mercedes Monet. I know, I know. You thought they were gone? Well... So did we. We thought the saga was over for good, with Mercedes showing up in New Japan, but here we are once again with fresh return speculation. As of right now, Mercedes reportedly has no more New Japan dates after April 23rd, which I know is after April 3rd. Don't shout at me. What I'm saying is the evidence is there that WWE and New Japan can coexist with Carl Anderson at Wrestle Kingdom, so why not continue that blossoming relationship here? How about New Japan allow Mercedes to duck out for a little excursion back to the States to reunite with her fellow renegade Naomi on the Raw after Mania? Unlike Mercedes, Naomi is still contracted to WWE, reportedly, so a return is way more likely. So even if Mercedes isn't in tow, she could potentially make just as big a splash on her own. Regardless whether it's one or both of them, it'll be really nice to see the former tag champs return to reclaim the gold they relinquished almost a year prior. And number 10, Tommaso Ciampa. Speaking of long-awaited comebacks, Trips' WWE has sorely missed Tommaso Ciampa since the former two-time NXT champ underwent hip surgery back in October. Albeit brief, we were given a nice teaser as to Ciampa's future under the Triple H regime, and it looked... It looked real promising, gang. The Black Heart was given a major title shot against the then US champion Bobby Lashley on Raw back in August, and this did wonders for his stock. And when he also got to wear Harley Race's jacket, that was... 
That was pretty cool. That match was a telltale sign that Hunter was looking to feature one of his black and gold faves prominently on the main roster, despite him initially then being paired with The Miz. A Vince move if you couldn't guess. While Ciampa excelled in his pairing with Mike, a testament to his talents, it was always a weird fit. What would be much, much better suited for Ciampa would be the resumption of the legendary DIY saga from NXT. I know, we're still talking about it. Whether paired with Gargano or more likely returning to obliterate him, Ciampa and Gargano on the main roster would provide both men a bigger stage to showcase their excellent storytelling abilities. So have that happen on the Raw after Mania, or at the very least, tease something to happen. The hardcore international crowd would no doubt appreciate appreciate the NXT callback, and it would also allow Gargano to move away from all the Dexter Loomis stuff. Sorry, Dexter, but also not really. And that's our list. Subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, and if you want to see more like this, check out last week's list from Adam of 20 wrestlers that could win King and Queen of the Ring. Here's a clip. Finn Balor. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I think it's time the Prince leveled up to become a king. Following, hopefully, a definitive victory over Edge in a Hell in a Cell WrestleMania match, Balor will be left wondering what's next. Sure, a singles championship would be nice, but before that, let's get Finn donning a 